Yay! Oh, how do I record this? Oh, I just download it later, that's fine. <laughs> Yay! Hello! Who's that? Carly. Hi, Carly. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Jodie! Ah, Jodie! Jodie is my friend from yonks and yonks ago. Hi, babes. How's things? Um, I'm just going to wait maybe a minute to see who else pops on. And we're going to get straight to it. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you're all well. And if you aren't well, I hope that you're doing okay. Um, I had a nice day today, enjoying the sunshine, did a bit of gardening on the balcony, which was very relaxing. But I've been looking forward all day to reading a story. Um, so I've got a few options and uh, I've got a few friends to help me as well. Um, you'll, you'll see here, there's Yusuf the unicorn. Um, and Mr. Robin over in the corner there, watching from afar. Um, and I've also got my special teddy bear. Um, well, he's got two names. I know him as Super Ted, but he's he was named originally as Technological Ted. Um, but yeah, he's been with me since I was a tiny, tiny baby. I used to sit on him here when I was really, really small. So... Um, yeah, it's nice to give him a cuddle because I live on my own. Um, but anyway, let's um, look at some books and see what people want to to have a listen to. Um, I was originally going to read a story from Beatrix Potter. I was looking at like actual books I had in the house so that we could look at the pictures. Um, and Beatrix Potter is a classic. So there's that. Um, some of them are a little bit scary, but I think they're okay. I think they're okay. And then I've got some others that I think you might like. This is an absolute classic. The Hungry Caterpillar is amazing. Um, who knows this one? Ah, said Stork. So get, get commenting if there's one that you really, really want to hear, guys children or adults if you have a favourite. Is there one about jelly? Who likes jelly? <laughs> I don't really like jelly that much but I will eat it if I'm at a party. And there's one about a chameleon called A Colour of His Own which is quite sweet. Um, and then I have some Christopher Robin verse, um, some nice poetry as well. But I did say I'd be doing a story so I, I can make sure that it's a story. Um, so I'm going to wait and see if anyone comments and if anyone has a favourite. Uh, hi Chris. Hello. Hello from Ted. <laughs> um, yes. Hmm. I wonder which one I shall read. If no one comments and says which one they want to hear, I'm just going to have to close my eyes and pick a book. Shall I do that? Okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put all the books there. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to go... <gasps> Guys. Hi, Frederick. This is... I'm really glad I picked this one for the first session. <laughs> Ted says, hello. Hello, Chris. Hi. Janine. Hi, Janine. I don't have the hungry cat, but I think... Oh, yes, you mean the hungry caterpillar. Well, guess what, Janine? That's the one I picked with my eyes shut. So, there we are. So, this um, is a book that I had read to me when I was very small. Um, and I kept it all these years. Why did I do that? I think I did it for today because you guys are here. So that's just perfect. Okay, so I hope you're sitting comfortably. Um, and if you're ready to hear the story, then we'll begin. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. 
I went, look. Oh, uh, that's... It was from my half-brother when I was really little. His name was Julian. Okay, the hungry caterpillar. Oh, and the author says it is for my sister, Krista. Can you see there? In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Where's the moon? Where's the leaf? Oh, where's the egg? The tiny egg. <laughs> One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. There he is. Can you see the tiny, tiny caterpillar? Look how tiny he is. And he's very hungry. He started to look for some food. Look at him up on his tippy toes looking for food. What came next? On Monday, he ate through an apple. Oh, look, there's a hole where he ate through it. But he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears. But he was still hungry. One, two. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. But he was still hungry. No. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. <laughs> On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. What? Let's count the oranges. I can't believe it. One, two, three, four. Oranges. <laughs> okay, what are all these things? On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. There he is, not looking very clever at all. I think I would have a stomach ache as well. Who would have a stomach ache? Definitely me. <laughs> Ooh, look at that big leaf. Can you see the caterpillar? The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. <laughs> of course he did. I think that leaf looks very tasty, very nice indeed. <laughs> now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big Fat caterpillar. My goodness me, isn't he just? Wow, look at that, how he's grown. What's this? What's this thing? He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out and... <gasps> He was a beautiful butterfly. Look at him now. Look at all those colours. Hello, Fanny. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you. Look at all those colours. Look, I, what colours can you see on the butterfly's wings? I like that pink and purple. 
And I really like this bright blue here. That's really pretty. Hmm. Look, you can make the butterfly flap its wings. <laughs> Oh, the end. It's a, it's quite a short story, but for a picture book, it's really, really nice. Um, wow, I can't believe I can't remember all of the book from when I was little. And I can't believe that he ate all that food. Hang on. What did he eat again? <laughs> this one. These pages are crazy. Look at all the food he ate. I've only just started to like pickles. When I was little, I didn't like pickles because they're very sour. Ooh, nice holy cheese. Lollipop looks good. Mm. Ooh, and the watermelon. Watermelon's yummy too. Hi, Bambi. Hi, everyone. What's your favourite food on there? I do like an ice cream too sometimes. But he ate all that in one go. Surely that's impossible. I don't know. So that is The Hungry Caterpillar by Erin Carl. Um, it's only nearly quarter to. I could maybe read another short book if you want me to. Um... I think Ted's up for it. He's not really got anywhere to be. We're we're just chilling, aren't we? Yeah. We haven't really got many places to go at the moment. No. You haven't even been outside today, have you, Ted? No, no, I've just stayed inside. Just stayed in the bedroom and just, you know, read a bit. Read a bit of philosophy and, you know, did some yoga. Did you do yoga? Yeah, I'm trying it, you know, with all this isolation. Oh, that's quite cool. I, I had no idea you were doing that. You're doing that when I go? In secret? Yeah, yeah. I just want to do yoga on my own. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Fanny says, thank you so much, Tammy. Oh, I'm missing work at the moment and I read it so often to the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you must be missing it a lot. It's such a nice thing to do. Um, and reading every day for me, I'm doing readings Monday to Thursday. It just gives me a bit of a a timetable, a focus for my day. Um, let's see, let's see. I know what I'll do. I don't need to read a whole other story. I can just read a poem. I can read a couple of poems from the verse book. This is um, the Christopher Robin verse book. So it's all about Winnie the Pooh. Who knows Winnie the Pooh? I know Winnie the Pooh from when I was little, which was millions of years ago. <laughs> But um, yeah, Winnie the Pooh's great, lovely characters. Ted, who is your favourite Winnie the Pooh character? Mm, I think Piglet. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's a good chap. He is a good chap, you're right. <laughs> I like Eeyore. I think he's sweet. Okay, I will read a couple of... I'll, do you know what? I'll just read poetry. I'm here, aren't I? I'll read poetry for a bit and you can tune in, you can tune out, you do whatever you want to do. Um, it's just it's just nice to read some nice stuff. Okay, so this is the Christopher Robin verse book by A.A. A. Milne. And this poem is called Us Two. Wherever I am, there's always poo. There's always poo in me. Whatever I do, he wants to do. Where are you going today? Says Pooh. Well, that's very odd, because I was too. Let's go together, says Pooh, says he. Let's go together, says Pooh. What's twice eleven? I said to Pooh. Twice what? Said Pooh to me. I think it ought to be twenty-two. Just what I think myself, said Pooh. It wasn't an easy sum to do, but that's what it is said Pooh, said he. That's what it is, said Pooh. Let's look for dragons, I said to Pooh. Yes, let's, said Pooh to me. We crossed the river and found a few. Yes, those are dragons all right, said Pooh. As soon as I saw their beaks, I knew. That's what they are, said Pooh, said he. That's what they are, 
said Pooh. Let's frighten the dragons, I said to Pooh. That's right, said Pooh to me. I'm not afraid, I said to Pooh. And I held his paw and I shouted, Shoo, silly old dragons, and off they flew. I wasn't afraid, said Pooh, said he. I'm never afraid with you. So wherever I am, there's always Pooh. There's always Pooh and me. What would I do, I said to Pooh, if it wasn't for you? And Pooh said, true, it isn't much for fun for one, but two can stick together, says Pooh, says he. That's how it is, says Pooh. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, this is a very famous one. Um, who knows Kermit the Frog? Who knows the green Kermit the Frog from the Muppets? I do. Um, he sang this, but I think I'll just say it. <laughs> it's called Halfway Down. Halfway down the stairs is a stair where I sit. There isn't any other stair quite like it. I'm not at the bottom, I'm not at the top, so this is the stair where I always stop. Halfway up the stairs isn't up and it isn't down. It isn't in the nursery, it isn't in the town. And all sorts of funny thoughts run round my head. It isn't really anywhere, it's somewhere else instead. <laughs> That is a classic. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. The Three Foxes. I don't know this one. You're right there, Ted. <laughs> the Three Foxes. Once upon a time, there were three little foxes who didn't wear stockings and they didn't wear socks. But they all had handkerchiefs to blow their noses and they kept their handkerchiefs in cardboard boxes. They lived in the forest in three little houses and they didn't wear coats and they didn't wear trousers. They ran through the woods on their little bare tootsies and they played touch last with a family of mousies. They didn't go shopping in the high street shopsies but caught what they wanted in the woods and copses. They all went fishing and they caught three wormses. They went out hunting and they caught three whoopses. Oh, here they are. They went to a fair and they all won prizes. Three plum puddingses and three mince pieses. They rode on elephants and swang on swingses and hit three coconuts at coconut cheeses. That's all that I know of these three little foxes who kept their handkerchiefs in cardboard boxes. They lived in the forest in three little houses, but they didn't wear coats and they didn't wear trousers and they didn't wear stockings and they didn't wear socks. The end. <laughs> hi, Barnaby. Hi, hi, Dan. Thanks for tuning in. This is so nice and I kind of wish it was a Zoom so that we could all see each other but I thought because people would have their children that we should all kind of be maybe a bit separate but also, I don't know, it's just that way more people can be involved as well so it's as many people as possible can be included which is nice. Um, hmm. Who likes rice pudding? <laughs> Not me. I don't like rice pudding. I think if I had to choose between jelly and rice pudding, I'd choose the jelly. There's one called rice pudding here. But maybe I'm wrong. Some people like rice pudding, don't they? It's not all about me. I'll read it. <laughs> rice pudding. What is the matter with Mary Jane? She's crying with all her might and main. And she won't eat her dinner, rice pudding again. Is the matter with Mary Jane? What is the matter with Mary Jane? I've promised her dolls and a daisy chain and a book about animals, all in vain. What is the matter with Mary Jane? 
What is the matter with Mary Jane? She's perfectly well, and she hasn't a pain. But look at her. Now she's beginning again. What is the matter with Mary Jane? What is the matter with Mary Jane? I've promised her sweets and a ride in the train, and I've begged her to stop for a bit and explain. What is the matter with Mary Jane? What is the matter with Mary Jane? She's perfectly well, and she hasn't a pain, and it's lovely rice pudding for dinner again. What is the matter with Mary Jane? <laughs> okay, Mary Jane is like me then. If I was being given rice pudding every day, I wouldn't want to get out of bed. It would be a serious problem. <laughs> oh, there's some nice pictures here. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm, okay. Let's try this one. The engineer. Let it rain. Who cares? I've a train upstairs with a brake which I make from a string sort of thing, which works in jerks, because it drops in the spring, which stops with the string, and the wheels all stick so quick that it feels like a thing that you make with a brake, not string. So that's what I make when the day's all wet. It's a good sort of brake, but it hasn't worked yet. I wonder if many people are making toys at home or, or making anything at home while we're sort of staying inside with our families. I, I haven't made any toys, but I made a card for my mum for Mother's Day, which was really nice to do. But yeah, maybe we'll make some more stuff while we stay indoors. Um, ooh, okay. The King's Breakfast. Here they are. Here's Kingy and Queenie. <laughs> okay. The king asked the queen, and the queen asked the dairy maid, could we have some butter for the royal slice of bread? The queen asked the dairy maid. The dairy maid, the dairy maid said, certainly, I'll go and tell the cow now before she goes to bed. The dairy maid, she curtsied, and went and told the oldenie. Don't forget the butter for the royal slice of bread. The Alderney said sleepily, oh, You better tell His Majesty that many people nowadays like marmalade instead. The dairy maid said, Fancy, and went to Her Majesty. She curtsied to the Queen and she turned a little red. Excuse me, Your Majesty, for taking of the liberty but marmalade is tasty, if it's very thickly spread. The Queen said, oh, and went to His Majesty. Talking of the butter for the royal slice of bread, many people think that marmalade is nicer. Would you like to try a little marmalade instead? The King said, bother. And then he said, oh, dearie me. The King sobbed. Oh, dearie me, and went back to bed. Nobody, he whimpered, could call me a fussy man. I only want a little bit of butter for my bread. The queen said, there, there, and went to the dairy maid. The dairy maid said, there, there, and went to the shed. The cow said, there, there. I didn't really mean it. Here's milk for his porringer and butter for his bread. The Queen took the butter and brought it to His Majesty. The King said, Butter, eh? And bounced out of bed. Nobody, he said, as he kissed her tenderly. Nobody, he said, as he slid down the banisters. Nobody, my darling, could call me a fussy man, but... I do like a little bit of butter to my bread. <laughs> oh dear. Fair enough. I think I prefer butter to marmalade. <laughs> All right, we've got five minutes, everyone. So, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Yes, let's do this one then. Okay, we're going to do one more poem 
and then I'm gonna say good night. Ted's gonna say good night. Yusuf the unicorn is gonna say good night, and Mr. Robin at the back there will say good night. So, one more. The Little Black Hen by A. A. Milne. Berryman and Baxter, Pretty Boy and Pen, and Old Farmer Middleton are five big men. All of them were after the little black hen. She ran quickly, they ran fast, Baxter was first and Berryman was last. I sat and watched by the old plum tree. She squawked through the hedge and she came to me. The little black hen said, oh, it's you. I said, thank you, how do you do? And please will you tell me, little black hen, what did they want, those five big men? The little black hen said to me, they want me to lay them an egg for tea. If they were emperors, if they were kings, I'm much too busy to lay them things. I'm not a king and I haven't a crown. I climb up trees and I tumble down. I can shut one eye. I can count to ten. So lay me an egg, please, little black hen. The little black hen said, what will you pay if I lay you an egg for Easter day? I'll give you a please and a how do you do. I'll show you the bear who lives in the zoo. I'll show you the nettle place on my leg. If you'll lay me a great big Eastery egg. The little black hen said, I don't care for a how do you do or a big brown bear, but I'll lay you a beautiful Eastery egg if you'll show me the nettle place on your leg. I showed her the place where I had my sting. She touched it gently with one black wing. Nettles don't hurt if you count to ten. And now for the egg, said the little black hen. When I wake up on Easter day, I shall see my egg she promised to lay. If I were emperors, if I were kings, it couldn't be fuller of wonderful things. Berryman and Baxter, Pretty Boy and Pen, and Old Farmer Middleton are five big men. All of them are wanting an egg for their tea. But the little black hen is much too busy. The little black hen is much too busy. The little black hen is much too busy. She's laying an egg for me. <laughs> and there we go. That's the last poem. Um, thanks so much for being here, guys. Um, Ted says thank you too. Thank you very much. It was nice to listen to some poetry with Tamarin. And um, we'll be here tomorrow again at 6.30 um, to do some more stories and maybe some more poems. Um, yeah, I've still got a fair bit that I can read, so it will be great to see you. And... Um, have a lovely evening and sleep well.